Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to continue exploring this box. This is a package that I received from Cult Pens all the way in the UK. In it, we've already looked at the inks that I've ordered. Today, we're going to take a look at the Narwhal pen. So join me down on the mat, we'll explore the pen, we'll link it up, and then we'll do a writing sample. Welcome down to the mat. So here we go with a look at the pen that we're going to be unboxing. This is the box, it's a Narwhal box. I really like this, the way it's got the Narwhal there. And I don't know, to me, this looks a little bit like planets that are orbiting, but looks really nice. So let's slowly turn that over so that that planet orbit continues round. The bottom, fairly plain. We've got them planet orbit starting again there. I think that looks really nice. This end, we've got our barcode and stuff. Here, we've got a tab. So it's encouraging me to pull. So I'm going to gently pull this out. It's fairly stiff, fairly well packaged. What does that reveal? Well, it's a little pouch. I think that's a really nice idea. Something to keep the pen in. Hopefully, you might get two or three pens in there by the feel of it. Just going to lift it out. There's nothing else in the box. Pop the box to one side. So the pouch. We've got an wall here on the front. Other than that, it's fairly plain. There's a popper that's holding it fastened. Little, so a little thing here. Again, you can maybe slot something up there if you really wanted to. And reaching in, I'm going to pull out this pen here. This is the Narwhal Key West Isla Morada. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Let's take the pen out of the plastic wrapper. Well, the lid's off already. Let me just fasten that back. There we go. Just look at that. That's something you don't often see from me, is it? A sparkly pen. Fetching a pen stand. Let's get that on there. So, as I said, this is the Narwhal Key West Ida Morada. There is a blue version of this, but I deliberately went for this colour because I thought, that looks really different. And it is, isn't it? And looking at it, it looks absolutely gorgeous. We've got this gorgeous... I'm going to call it gold sparkle colour. With You know, there's gold sparkles on a gold background. But there's different shades in there. So you can see some paler shades. Could also be where the light's reflecting. That looks so nice, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And it's different than the normal pens I would buy. The top, it's got that nice derm on it. We're coming down to a gold coloured clip. Nice and springy. The cap is tapering out until it gets to roughly halfway down. Then it goes to the same width down to this band here. I'm just going to turn it around so you can see the band. There you go. From the band, there's a very tiny step down. You know, I hardly notice it. It's so small. Down into the rest of the body. The body then, it seems to be the same width all the way down to about three quarters of the way down. Then it tapers back in again to that domed end. So a bit like a torpedo type of shape. Very reminiscent of a number of other pens that I've got and I will fetch one in as a comparison in a few minutes. That's a look at the body. Let's take a look at the important part, the nib. So the cap takes half, one, one and a quarter, just over one and a quarter turns to come off. Then that reveals this black section, but most importantly, it reveals this gorgeous narwhal nib. That looks really nice, doesn't it? It's got a gold colour to it. We've got some nice engraving near the top. Then coming down underneath the breather hole, we've got the narwhal logo. And then we've got some more inscriptions underneath that. The sides of the nib, that's got some nice inscriptions on it. Really nice looking nib. I would guess it's a number five nib. I might be wrong. It might be bigger than that. But certainly on my first look, I think it is a fairly small nib. But we'll know better because in a minute, I'm going to fetch in some pens and we'll compare the nibs. 
The nib then comes up into this gold sparkled section. Again, I like it. I like the fact that it's following through with that same material all the way through the pen. Top of the section, we've got the threads for the cap and they're in that goldy brass color. If I unscrew this, there we go. It's a, it's a cartridge converter. Most of the other Narwhal pens, they're piston fillers. This isn't, it's a cartridge. It does come with a converter, which is nice to see. All in all, really nice looking pen. You pop it back together. So this pen cost me 66 Australian dollars. It's not overly expensive and I would think it's within the range of most people. Now I did say I'm going to do some size comparisons. So let me swap this out. I'm going to fetch in my multi-pen stand. There we go. Stand you up there. So the first pen I'm going to compare it to is the one that shape-wise it reminds me of. That's this one, a Pilot Metropolitan. The other pen I'm going to fetch in to compare is a Narwhal School Kill. In terms of size, the School Kill is just ever so slightly bigger, but it feels an awful lot heavier, even though there's not much size-wise. Let's take a look at the nibs. There's one. There's two. And there's the third one. Now, on the School Co., I've actually got on there a, a number six Joro nib. It's not the one which came with this pen because when I bought it, I bought this with a flex nib and I just didn't get on with it. So I swapped it out for a standard medium nib. When I'm looking at these, I'm thinking it's a bit deceptive with that nib. Before I thought it was small, but now when I see it next door to the school kill, it seems to be roughly the same size. So it's a number six nib. Whereas, you know, when I initially saw it, I thought, yeah, it's a bit small, isn't it? But it's not, it's just the right size. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to to step away for a few minutes. I'm going to take the pen. I'm going to give it a good clean out. When we come back, we'll take a look at the ink. We'll fill it up and we'll do our writing sample. Okay, the pen's been cleaned out. I always try and clean out my new pens just in case there's anything which has been left over from the manufacturing process, you know, little burrs of metal or any grease inside the workings of it. So just giving it a quick rinse through, I think really doesn't hurt and it doesn't take that long to do either. The ink, well, I'm expecting people to turn around and say, Gary, have you lost your mind? The ink I'm going to put in here it's by Noodler and it's Noodler Yellow. I know it's a bright ink. I bought a bottle of this about a year ago because I got a preppy with a highlighter nib and I thought, well, this is the perfect color for a highlighter. And that's what I normally use it for. But then when I ordered this pen, I thought, well, it's that yellow gold color pen. I've got to put a yellow ink in it. I mean, yes, I think I may look at getting a gold ink for the future, but the yellow, I'm hoping when we come to writing, will look all right coming out of this nib. It's a medium nib, so hopefully, it's not too fine but we'll see in a few minutes all right let's fetch in the ink bottle here it is noodle is yellow as you see i don't use that much of it because it's in that highlighter pen so i'm not often highlighting enough to need to fill it regularly so here we are that plunger it's all the way down into the ink we go we go up back down again Back up again. And then look at this. We've got a good virtually all the way up to the top with that ink. We just wipe off any excess from the nib and we'll put the pen back together again. One of the things I like about the Noodler's bottles, they're that little bit bigger, so there's less chance of me accidentally knocking it over. Whereas when I use my, like my diamines, because they're small, that's why I need to put them into a holder. So they don't end up being knocked all over the place when I'm my usual clumsy self. So let's fetch in the paper. So as usual, it's the Oxford notepad with that gorgeous optic paper. Really nice fountain pen friendly paper. Really love this paper. Let's see what that gorgeous yellow ink looks like on paper. So we have a narwhal, Key West, Isla Morada, with a medium nib. The ink, 
noodler yellow. Well, I'm not really convinced about the ink colour. I don't know about you. I think it's just too light. I mean, I'm going to give it a try. I'll keep it in this pen for a while, but I think this one might be one of those few inks where I don't write out the full fill and I'll end up changing it for something else. I may put a brown ink into here. I think something like Robert Oster Cafe Crema, which is a palish brown, may look quite nice in here. We'll have to see. Let's look at our drying times. Immediate. Yeah, it looks fairly wet, doesn't it? 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Doesn't seem to be much change there from the 10 seconds to me. Lastly, one minute. After a minute there, you know, that's fairly dry. So yes, it's got a reasonable drying time. Final writing sample. I'm going to move the mic close to the paper so you can hear the pen write. So that's quite nice. It's nice and smooth. It's a little bit glass-like. So you've got that little bit of the feel where it's gliding rather than writing. I personally aren't a fan of that. I like to have a little bit of feedback there. So that's one thing I need to look at. I think that in terms of writing, yeah, it's fine. As I said, I do think this ink may not be the right one. I'm just going to fetch in a different pen, which is a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. Why I'm fetching that in is I'm going to do a little bit of writing with the Robert Oster Cafe Crema. The reason for doing this is I think it'll be a fairly good match for that pen. Now that I've seen the pen in real life, it looks more of the brown rather than the yellow. But again, this is part of the fun of fountain pens is playing around with different things. The yellow ink, it may look all right. The issue we've got at the moment is I'm looking at this underneath my filming lights and I have very, very bright filming lights to make sure I get a really good bright light source so that when it films, I capture near enough what it looks like. And that does sometimes, I find, overpower the ink on the paper when I'm looking at it with my eyes rather than with the screen. So I will need to take this out of here and have a look at it later on in just normal daylight and in normal room light. And it could be the yellow looks fine then. At the moment, really, I'm not convinced by it. It just looks that shade too... I'm not, I want to say pale. Pale's not the right word, but I don't think it's the right colour at the moment. But it may be, as I say, I've got to get it into normal light rather than this artificial filming light that I use. But all right, tell you what I think. I've got a couple more tests to do. The first one is, does it need pressure to write? So there we are, I'm just dragging it over the paper. And I don't know if you can see on camera, there is ink coming out, there's a nice line. The other one is around line variation. You know, not really that much. If I press a bit harder, I do get a slightly thicker line and a slightly darker line. Then we go light again. Let's go across. So yeah, there is a real tiny, teeny little bit of line variation. I wouldn't want to press it too much though because, you know, I haven't bought it as a flex pen. It's a steel nib. I'm not expecting a lot of flex in it anyway. But if it's something you want, there is a little bit there. So what do I think of the pen? I like it. I think it looks unusual. I don't know if it's a pen that I would take out of the house. You know, I think I may get some funny looks if I turn up to a business meeting with this pen rather than with the black or the blue pens that I would normally take. But life's worth adventuring, isn't it? So it may be worth trying it anyway, because at the end of the day, what's the worst thing you can do? Have it as a speaking point. So yeah, no, I like it. I like the feel of it. If I take off the cap, Unposted, that's fine in my hand, I don't mind that. Does it post? Yes, it does. One thing I would be worried about, because we've got the metal here, 
I'd be worried about that scratching at this material. So I don't think I would post it. I don't normally post my pens anyway, and it feels fine without that. It's got the little lip at the bottom. In the writing I've done here, I've had no issues. That hasn't got into my finger at all. So I think that'll be fine for writing. I like the nib. I think that's a nice coloured nib to go with the rest of the pen. Is it worth the $66? Yep, it definitely is. Is it a pen where I'd buy the blue one as well? I think I will because I like the look of the pen. I like the feel of the pen. It's a nice writer. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on this Now Wall pen? I've got to be honest, I was torn between this one or the blue version, but I've got a load of blue pens already, so I thought, yeah, let's go for that gold and yellow colour one. Why not drop a comment down below? Are you planning to get one of these? What are your thoughts on it? Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm to surface the content for other people. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.